Hi, and welcome to this section of the Advanced Calculus 2 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to tackle the uh, sometimes daunting looking section called uh, trigonometric integrals, okay? Uh, so there's a section in Advanced Calculus 2 called trigonometric integrals. Uh, they're usually just the pages just bleed with a bunch of examples that have a lot of trigonometry in there and simplification and other things. And, uh, you know, those are, uh, uh, those are challenging because there's no one way to do them. You just sort of have to get a feeling for what you need to do. And the only way you can do that is to see some examples, okay? So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to tackle these types of problems in this section. Now, don't confuse this section with something you've already studied before on my previous DVD, which is called trigonometric substitution. That's when you are making a substitution uh, of a very specific type uh, that deal with the trig angles into the equation. This is trigonomic integrals, and let me give you an example of what uh, trigonometric integrals, integrals, let me give you an example of what that might look like. The first form of the uh, trigonometric integrals that you'll see uh, are of the form of the integral of sine so the, the basic way I want you to tackle these kinds of problems are as follows. There's, there's really no, no one way to do these things. I mean, you have to play with them. But I'm going to try to give you some guidelines. So what you say is, uh, for instance, in general, if m or n, which are these exponents here, are odd, odd, okay, if they're odd, okay, then here's what you're in general going to do. This is just an in general kind of thing. You're going to factor out. Uh, the one cubed x, so sine of x all raised to the 3 power times cosine squared x dx, and you want to evaluate that integral. What you want to do is you want to beat this thing into, the, into a shape so that you can do some sort of substitution on it and get it to cancel. So using our cookie cutter thing, which is sort of a first place to start, this is m and this is n, okay? This is odd. So I'm going to rewrite this integral as sine of x times sine squared of x sine squared of x dx okay now here's where the fun starts think about what I've done and why I've done it okay if I take uh, u to be equal to cosine of x okay if I take u and do a substitution to be equal to cosine of x I'm gonna have a u squared here and a u squared here and when I take the derivative of cosine I'm gonna get negative sine it's gonna end up being on the bottom and it's gonna cancel with this sign so you see that's why I factored them out I factored them out so that I could choose a, a clever substitution this cosine so that when I take the derivative it's gonna end up canceling you see I couldn't the power is 1 fifth 1 plus the exponent is 4 plus 1 is 5 1 fifth u to the fifth power minus this one is going to be 1 over exponent plus 1 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, u to the third power plus a constant. Okay? So I have the answer, 1 fifth u to the fifth power minus 1 third u to the third power plus a constant. And now I just plug in my definition of u, which is going to be 1 fifth times cosine to the fifth power of x minus 1 third now remember back in trigonometry when you were given an identity and you were saying you were told prove the identity. Well, you, you had to know your identities well and you had to play with them until you got the result you wanted. I mean, that was just part of the game. You had to do that. These integrals are kind of like that. You basically have to know some identities, uh, memorize them, write them down, something, and apply them and use them. And then finally, you'll get to a nice, cute substitution that'll work. And I know it's not very cookie cutter and it's not very comforting to tell you that you just have to play with it, but it's true. You just, you just have to play with it and get some practice. So in this case, I'm going to show you a little something here. What if I were to rewrite this guy as sine of x times cosine of x squared dx? I mean, I've changed nothing. I've just taken this and I've written it all together and squared it. So you square each term individually, you get back what you started with. So I've changed nothing. Okay. Now you can use the identity okay that we just looked at over here this one right here sine times cosine is equal to one half sine of 2x you see why I told you these identities would be useful uh, there for this reason so if I do that I say integral of one half times 2 1 over 32 sine of 2 times u u is 2x plus a constant Okay, now let's simplify everything here. 2 over 16 is going to be 1 eighth x minus 2 times 2 is 4, so I'm going to have 4 on top here, 
So right here what I'm going to have is 1 over 32 times the sine of 4x plus a constant. So this is the final answer. 1 8 x uh, minus 1 32nd sine of 4x. How to solve. Okay, in the last problem type we had sine to a power times cosine to a power and we had a couple of different flavors of problems like that. Now we're going to tackle problems that have tangents to a power times secants to a power and basically you're going to have another slew of identities that you're going to need to be able to try to beat these problems into a nice familiar form for you. So what we're talking about in this case are problems of the type integral tangent to the power of m, just some, some power of x times secant to some power, some other power, uh, that you had to evaluate that interval, okay? Well, we already talked about the fact that you're going to have to use your identity 1 plus tangent squared to secant squared most of the time, but before you do that, you really just want to see if you can, you can do something, you know, even simpler. Now, what if I chose a simple substitution here? That's the first thing you should always do with an integral, is look and see if you can do a simple substitution that can that can save your bacon and really make it easy. What if I had substituted for tangent? I said u is equal to tangent of x. What would the derivative of tangent be? Derivative of tangent is secant squared. So I would get a cancellation with secant squared. So right away, even if you're not sure, let's go ahead and give it a shot. u is equal to tangent of x du dx is equal to derivative of tangent is secant squared x. Then finally dx is equal to 1 over secant squared x du because we're going to end up needing that to plug into here. So let's go ahead and plug it in right now. Let's rewrite our integral as integral of tangent cubed but we define u to be tangent so it's u cubed times 1 plus u squared. I rewrite the secant as secant of x times secant to the fourth power of x dx. So you see a common theme. A lot of times what you'll end up doing is taking one of the powers and rewriting it as something else to let you make a cancellation. Now let me ask you this. If I were to choose a substitution, u is equal to secant of x, the derivative of secant is tangent times secant from your derivative tables, which would cancel with that. So let's do it. So if we say u is equal to secant of x, then du dx is equal 